first game with Kevin and, and Kyrie together in a while, and you had 67 from them. So what can you say about their performance tonight? Yeah, pretty uh, typical of those two. Um, you know, efficient uh, and explosive scores. Um, you know, can uh, – I thought they did a good job playing off each other and, and keeping the thing moving and us playing as a team. And, and I thought there was a pretty good flow out there for the most part. And then just before that, that run in the second quarter, I mean, Phoenix was, was pretty in control of the game. Just what do you think they were giving you guys the most trouble, whether it was Hayden, some of the switches, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, m more than anything, Hayden had uh, seven or eight offensive rebounds in, in the first half. And, uh, you know, that hurt us. Um, but you could probably pick a few reasons. We weren't maybe as sharp early in the game as we were later, uh, but we kind of grew into it and figured out, you know, I think some of the defensive patterns that we, we needed to get better at. And so we, we got better as the game progressed. But, uh, you know, there's probably a few factors as to why we fell behind early. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve. Um, this is twofold. I mean, you mentioned Kyrie and KD being, it's a typical performance, but, I mean, KD had been out hurt for a week. And Kyrie, I think it's fasting and coming off of 4-19. and 19. Are you surprised that they can be as efficient as they were tonight, all things considered? Or does that cease to surprise you at this point? Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's. I think it's more normal that they're, that they're efficient like that than otherwise. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, Kevin's shown that his scoring doesn't seem to get affected by a long layoff, whether it was uh, coming off the Achilles or coming off the hamstring. He comes, seems to come right back in his rhythm and timing are excellent. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very impressive for sure. I don't want to diminish how, how special they are, but, uh, you know, it's more, more the norm than I think uh, the extraordinary for those two. And the second part was uh, you had said before the game you didn't anticipate uh, Kevin playing 30. Granted, he only played 28. But I mean, is part of that just a, an admission that some minutes are a heavier load than others and the way he was playing, this wasn't a heavy load or did something change in there? Uh, you know, from I think from the time I talked to you, I finally talked to performance and we, we came up with, a, a you know, 28 minutes. And so that's kind of what we stuck to. Greg Logan with Newsday. And... Uh, on that, that playing time situation, I mean, he, he played 20 out of 24 in the second half. So do you anticipate kind of a pattern like that uh, going forward for a little while until he gets uh, everything completely under him? You know, we'll see. I mean, I think we monitor it and uh, we'll see if we start him next game or not. But, um, you know, that's the type of thing that we want to just continue to have the flexibility to decide game to game what's the best output for him and what's the best uh, order of the output. and. You know, tonight we just made sure, he, although he'd load up in the second half with minutes, he would have plenty of breaks. And, uh, you know, he'd have the he'd come out of the game with a break. He'd have the quarter break. He'd have timeouts. Um, so he came out twice and had a quarter break in between. So we just tried to manage it that way. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Coach, you know, this is a really good Suns team, right? They, they're they second in the West. And then on top of that, they come out East, and I believe they just beat Boston, just beat Philly. And, and just be another Eastern Conference team. So for, for you guys to come out here without James, obviously, with, and with all the, the roster fluctuations that have been, and to come out and beat these guys, what does that say to you about where your team is right now? You know, really, it just... Um I look at it as as uh, where we are today, and today we performed. You know, uh, you know we could have been better defensively, but but a lot of good stretches. Um, we created separation uh, with our defense, and uh, you know offensively um, we were able to score. So, you know tonight it was good. Lots to build on, lots of positives. Uh, but for me, it's never uh, this is where we are. It's where are we going, and so this is an indicator of what we can do well and where we can improve and continue to, to chip away and get better. So that, I don't ever really look at it as far as, uh, um, you know, who we are, where we are. I look at it as where we're trying to get to and how can we build off of this, uh, whether we win or lose, play well or bad, what was the lesson and what can we learn? Brian Mahoney with AP. Hey, Steve, no other NBA coach has ever thought to bring Kevin Durant off the bench. Uh, this is... Uh... <laughs> no, but uh, just, I mean, uh, is it hard to stick with the plan? I mean, like when you fall behind 10-9, you're like, all right, let's get Kevin Durant in there. Is it easy to kind of to stick to this because you are thinking big picture, obviously? Yeah, two things. I think you think big picture. And I'd rather uh, fall behind and have Kevin in the back pocket than go up and say, okay, Kev, you're done in the third quarter. Um, so I think that's kind of the give and take of it. And uh, he's been on board with it. And so, uh, you know, 
you know, props to Kevin for, for being willing to, to try something like this that I think gives us a chance to be as flexible as we can be under the circumstances.